Hello, this is Matt. I'm going to talk about um, logging into Unix servers and um, using SSH keys to do that. Um, so, why would you want to log into a Unix server? Uh, well, a Unix server, I mean a Linux server or a Solaris server or whatever. Um, well, you might want to log onto a box to go and help somebody out, um, to go and do a, a shared pairing session with somebody or go and look on a production box to see what's going on with it, all those sort of things. Um, so generally the way we do that is by creating an account on the server for you. Some, somebody in an infrastructure team or PEG would do that um, and then they'd give you a password and you log into that box with a password um, with an SSH client using your passwords. So passwords aren't the most secure things in the world. We the um, Unix admin world has kind of moved on from that and we're now using SSH keys where we possibly can. Um, the reason for that is that there's um, a public slash private separation so you only need to give the server admin your public key to be able to for him to be able to set you up or an account on that box um, and also um, public keys are not very brute forceable um, so there's a lot more security surrounding public keys. Um, so Let's say um, I'm a server admin. Here's my server. Um, it's called a server, as you'd expect. And there it is running some processes. Not very much um, because it's a virtual machine. Um, and I'm on my server. Um, it's called a server. And I want to add an account for my friend Winston Wolf, who's going to come and help me solve some problems. Um, so what I would do is I'll go and add a user using the add user command. I'd use a Winston. Um, and because we're not going to use passwords, I'm going to disable his password. So I do that like that. I'd use a Winston dash dash disable password. So Winston Wolf, he comes on and he solves problems. Um, so there we go. That would have created Winston a home directory. There it is. And there's some basic files for Winston. Now, we need to do some stuff with keys now. Um, so now I'm going to pretend to be Winston. So here I am, I'm Winston on Winston's laptop and what I need to do is generate a, a key pair. Um, you only need to do this the first time that you ever generate keys um, because you can use the same key uh, for different servers. Um, if you're in a single organization then there's no need to have different keys really. Um, so I do an SSH key gen. And that creates a key file, a, pri a private key in the file ID underscore RSA. Um, I'm not going to put a passphrase on this um, for now, just for simplicity's sake. Um, you should use a passphrase, really, um, but let's not use one just for now. And there we go. It's generated a key pair for me. So if I look in the SSH directory, we'll see um, a couple of files here. ID underscore RSA. That's the private key. That's the thing you guard with your life. Um, that's effectively the equivalent of what the password is. Um, we don't want that to get into anybody else's hands. Um, keep that secret. Keep the permissions on the file very, very strict. and uh, Don't give it to anybody else. The other bit, the public key, that's a shorter file. Um, as you can see, um, it's got an identifier on it so we can see whose it is. That's mine. Um, now, this is, the, this is the bit that you get to the server admin. So the server admin will set you up an account and he'll take your key and he'll add it to a file in the SSH keys directory called authorized keys. Like so. Let's just secure these files like that. So now the Winston user has an authorized key which is the public key that you generated, that Winston generated on his laptop and the server admin has put it onto the server in that directory. So now Winston, let's go back to Winston. Winston has given his key to the admin, the admin has put it on the server. So now, moment of truth, if you SSH this to the server, he's logged in. All right, Winston at a server. Now, so Winston's logged into this server um, but he can't really do very much because he's just a, a plain old user. Um, so as a server admin, I probably grant him some more privileges. Um, and we'll do that with the um, sudo command. Um, so Winston can use sudo to go and do whatever he needs to do, whether it's to look at log files or um, 
edit a configuration file or restart something or whatever, um, we can use sudo to do that. Um, so one of the easiest ways to do this on Ubuntu, for example, is as an admin, um, is to use the device sudo command to set up privileges for your users um, to do what they need to do. Um, so on this box, I've changed the admin group. Um, this nomenclature here, the percent admin, means that um, users uh, who are in the group, the Unix group called admin, have these privileges on the line that's highlighted right now. Um, and I've changed this so that these users can um, use sudo without a password to run any command. Um, that's quite dangerous. You wouldn't want to do that on a production server, um, but that's a topic for another, um, a different screencast, I think. So yes, I've changed uh, this configuration from looking like that um, to looking like that. So I'll write that out and I'll add Winston to that group, which I can do by going add user Winston. Have I got this the right way around? I think so. Admin. There we go. So Winston has been added to the, the group admin. Now here's Winston again. Um, I'm just going to log out and log in again as Winston so that the, the group change takes effect. Um, so there we go. We're logged back in as to the server. And now I should be able to use sudo to look at a log file perhaps. Yep, there we go. That works. Um, and basically now Winston has the privileges to do whatever he needs to do, which is nice. Um, so there we go. There's a, ba a very basic introduction to SSH keys, a little bit of sudo, um, how you would get into a, a, a collaborative shell environment with another with another user. Um, lots of details glossed over here, for example, um, using no password um, and allowing Winston full access to this box. That's the sort of thing you can do in dev. Obviously in production we have to be a bit more careful. Um, but as I said earlier, that's a topic for another screencast. Anyway, I hope this is good. Leave me some comments. Bye.